And at that exact same time, we discovered the first ever Neanderthal skeleton. And so it was like, hold on, we're not even just another animal. We're not even the only type of human. So what basically happened was... You know what, quick question, and this is like a very basic question for a guy like you, but I do think it helps reset the deck for idiots like me. When we're talking and throwing around like Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, obviously these are different things, but they're discussed in a light in common parlance where it's like, oh, we're talking about like humankind in a way. If you had to outline the main differences between when they exist, obviously Homo sapiens still exist, but you know, and, and what the differences were between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, how would you explain that to like a fifth grader? Well, you you say that's a simple question, but that's not a simple question at all. That's all like right, the good. question. There is like no one really knows, and there's so much debate around that. Like, what is the difference between Neanderthal and Homo sapien? How different really are we? Because we can't have been that different because we bred with Neanderthals. We still have Neanderthal DNA in us, at least non-African people do. So me and you, like as white people, we have Neanderthal DNA within us. So we can't have been that different from them because you can't breed with something that's, you know, genetically too different from you. So we are very similar to Neanderthals. And so the difference is what people classify is, is like skull and like brow ridge shape and stuff like that. But there's also variety amongst Homo sapiens. That's that what case. I'm saying. We have all different looking people around the world. Exactly. I don't look anything like a guy in China. Exactly. But we're both the same human race. Exactly. So, I mean, so, so yeah, I mean, there there is like... So you can identify, they do identify Neanderthal skull and they, they claim, you know, they say it's a different species, but the line of that is quite blurry. And yeah, it's, all, it's kind of in flux. It's always in debate, really. And so it kind of depends where you kind of land in that, in that debate. But my argument is that we are extremely similar to Neanderthals. And I, and this is quite controversial, but I would say I'm not sure they're, you know, any different from us in terms of intelligence. And that's why that's why I base that's where I take these sites like them creating jewelry and say, look, they clearly had symbolic right. intelligence, right? They were they were clever. Um and I think to be honest, I think it it's a really outdated idea that they were dumb. Mm. Because what's interesting is that we we kind of put ourselves on this pedestal, right? And we so when Neanderthals were discovered in at the exact same time as Darwin's theory of evolution. So in the late 19th century, Darwin had this theory that, you know, we're no different from animals, basically. And that was a huge paradigm shift in the scientific world because up until that point, humans had always been seen as, you know, the pinnacle of everything. We're God's children, right? We're the smart you know, people that came from the Garden of Eden were the, were the clever ones. But then Darwin came along and he was like, no, we're just another animal. Mm. And that, that was a huge shock to everyone because suddenly we lost our special status. Hey guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It's a huge, huge help. Thank you. And at that exact same time, we discovered the first ever Neanderthal skeleton. And so it was like, hold on, we're not even just another animal. We're not even the only type of human. So what basically happened was that we decided that, okay, we may not be any different from the, these animals and we may not be the only human, but we're the smart ones, right? And then we named ourselves Homo sapiens, which literally translate to wise man. So we were like, okay, we're the smart ones. Then, so we've given ourselves our special status again because we've lost this special status. So that's kind of where this idea came from that Neanderthals and other human species were dumb because it was us basically trying to regain our special status on top of the food chain. But I, I don't think that's really scientific at all. I mm. think that's just us trying to, you know, big ourselves up. And I think since then, loads of evidence has come out to show that Neanderthals were just as smart as us and Denisovans were just as smart as us. And yeah, um, I don't, yeah, I don't see any scientific basis on why that we think that they were stupider than us other than us trying to make ourselves look good. When was the last time we saw Denisovans on 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 Earth? Is that what you just said? When was the last time we saw them on Earth? So we, I mean, yeah. we have hardly any evidence of Denisovans. We have like a tooth and a jawbone, and they just found this. Well, they just classified this skull called the Dragon Man skull mm. as Denisovan or Denisovan. Um, so we, they found uh, Denisovans in Denisova Cave in Siberia relatively recently, like a decade ago, and they just they classified it as a, a new species. Um, what what made it 
diff what made it different for them to be able to classify it like the literal shape of the skull and brows similar to Neanderthals? Yeah, so well, I mean, we hardly have anything. So as I say, we only have a teeth and a jawbone. And what's interesting is they're quite big as well. Like the Denisovan molar is like way bigger than a sapien molar. Mm. And that leads to people who have theories that maybe they were giants or something. But mm. they're, they're a distinct species because, I mean, they're so much bigger, but we we really don't know very much about them because of the sheer lack of fossil evidence. Oh, it sounds like there's a lot on the bone there, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. That's in that's going to be a rabbit hole for me. I'm very unfamiliar with that. The end of the year wears everyone down. Long days, short nights, too much caffeine, and somehow, of course, you're still exhausted. If you've been pushing through burnout, it might not just be stress. It could be your sleep. Thankfully, there's Ghostbed. Ghostbed is a family-run company founded by a team with more than 20 years of mattress-making expertise. They know how to build a bed that's comfortable, durable, and actually helps you recover after long days. Every Ghostbed mattress is made with premium materials, proven cooling technology, and their exclusive Procore layer, a targeted support system that reinforces the center of the mattress where your body's the heaviest. It helps keep your spine aligned and your back supported so you wake up ready to take on whatever's next. And if you're a hot sleeper, Ghostbed's cooling materials help regulate your temperature automatically, keeping you comfortable all night long. Every Ghostbed mattress comes with a 101 night sleep trial and a 20 to 25 year warranty. Furthermore, shipping is fast and free with most orders arriving in two to five days. Right now, during Ghostbed's holiday sale, you can get 25% off site-wide for a limited time. Just go to ghostbed.com slash Julian, that link is in my description below, and use promo code Julian at checkout. Once again, that's ghostbed.com slash Julian, link in my description below, promo code Julian. Upgrade your sleep with Ghostbed, the makers of the coolest bed in the world. Some exclusions apply, see site for details. Yeah, I mean, they're relatively new in terms of our understanding of them, human species. Now, when was the last time, like you said, there's Neanderthal DNA in, mm. in some Homo sapiens, but when was the last time we saw them exist at like, that we know of at scale? so to speak. So they disappeared around this time of the out-of-Africa migration, right? Like the 50, 60,000. Yeah, line. exactly. Right. So this that is, in my view, the biggest argument for the idea that we are smarter than them, is that we effectively replace them because, you know, we won. So mm. maybe we are smarter. But then and that's a, often an argument given, like, you know, okay, maybe they did all this symbolic stuff. Maybe they had in symbolic intelligence. They had the same size brain as us, but we won. So we're the smart ones. But there's loads of other reasons why we could have wiped them out. I mean, firstly, did we wipe them out or did we just merge, right? Did we just breed with them and we kind of yeah. morphed into what we are now and we're both sapien and Neanderthal? Or was it something like disease? Was these two populations clashing? Mm, a lot of possibilities. And they died because we gave them some horrible pathogen right. or something. Like, it's not clear. And this is the thing with prehistory is it's presented as we know all the answers, right? We, we, we worked it all out in our modern age. We're all so smart in the... In the space age, you know, we know everything, but we don't really. It's just guesses based on extremely limited evidence. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities that, you know, could be way different to your point than we were just smarter than them. It's also like you think about like warring populations and just playing this out in my head. You know, if I had Lane Johnson and Miles Garrett in my homo no sapien idea. race you don't know who they are <laughs> lane johnson is a left tackle on the eagles he's fucking huge okay and then miles garrett is the defensive end on cleveland browns for american football american football okay. and he's <laughs> they're both enormous right if i put them up next to balan jalal who i just had in here who's like a fucking genius neuroscientist they're going to kill him. You know, no disrespect to Balan. He's not their size. And they're going to be able to wield any kind of blunt force weapon and kill him very quickly. So maybe, and I'm really going beyond where I should here, but maybe there's also a possibility that like Homo sapiens had developed based on what the world populations were at a time to be able to wipe out the Neanderthals because they had more and they were bigger or a combination of that as well, meaning it wouldn't have to do with like what they have up here to survive. Is that possible or is that a little beyond? Well, I think the Neanderthals are probably a little bit bigger than us in terms of, you know, physical anatomy. Mm. They're probably slightly bigger than us. They had slightly bigger heads. Um, but that doesn't mean that, I mean, and that's an argument for we were more intelligent, right? But then there's evidence coming out recently that Neanderthals had the same kind of technology as us. Like we recently found some arrowheads 
that were, pre- I mean, to have an arrowhead, you mean you have a bow and arrow. That's pretty sophisticated yeah. technology. Yeah. We don't really think of bows and arrows as technology, but oh, it, is. it is technology. <laughs> and again, that was always thought to be a primarily safe and a exclusively sapient technology. But now we know that Neanderthals, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Got it. All right. Eight, 80,000 year old stones in Uzbekistan may be the world's oldest arrowheads, and they might have been made by Neanderthals. All right, let's read a little bit of this. Tiny stone artifacts discovered in Uzbekistan may be the oldest known arrowheads a new study suggests. It remains unclear whether their stone, whether these stone tools were created by modern humans, Neanderthals, or some other group. Archaeologists found the tools at the site of Obi Rakhmat in northeastern Uzbekistan. Previous excavations uncovered a variety of stone tools at the site, such as a thin and wide blades and smaller bladelets, but numerous small triangular points called microliths were overlooked in prior work because they were broken. Let me get a little more, Joe. Now in a study published August 11th in the journal Plus One, the researchers argue that these micro points are too narrow to have fit into anything other than arrow-like shafts. The stones also display the kind of damage that would be expected from used arrowheads, study co-author Hughes Pleason an associate scientist at the University of Bordeaux in France told Live Science, these micro points, which are about 80,000 years old, may therefore be the oldest arrowheads in the world, around 6,000 years older than 74,000 years, years old artifacts unearthed in Ethiopia. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, not definitively Neanderthal, but likely Neanderthal if you base... The, Keep that mic a little closer. Sorry, That's if you good. base the view of history around the out of Africa migration then that's almost certainly Neanderthal because that's outside of Africa, right? And we know that Homo sapiens did go outside of Africa, but that's probably why they're saying they're likely Neanderthal. But it's more evidence that, I mean, if they are Neanderthal, it's more evidence that, you know, they were as intelligent as us because they were developing technology such as arrowheads, sophisticated weapons technology, you know? So were they stupider than us? I don't know. Is there... Mm. I don't want to ask this. Thank you guys for watching the episode. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button on the video. They're both a huge, huge help. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram and X, those links are in my description below.